Common features of cloud services. No matter what model your as a service is running, there are three components that are required to be part of the cloud. And those three components are crucial in determining whether or not you are truly an as a service. The three components, as defined by NIST, are business support, provisioning and configuration, and portability slash interoperability. When talking about software as a service, let's use Gmail for an example. The business support is how do I define how much I'm paying for and how much my users get. The pros and version of Gmail, the apps for domains version of Gmail as it were, allows you to say I would like this number of users and I would like every one of my users to have a certain number of gigabytes of storage and you then pay for those services and that's the business support layer. You are able to make business decisions through an interface in order to determine how much you're going to spend on the service. Now if the service is free it can still be cloud it just happens to be that all the sliders for the business support are free so and it's yeah anyway <laughs> free gets a little weird but most free services have a pay service and so they have business support provisioning and configuration this is things like I'm running Gmail for our software model and what I'm going to do is configure what domain I'm going to run on, which users I have, what rights those users have, and where their mail and rules go, who has what access to contacts. Those are all provisioning and configuration at the software as a service layer. Portability and interoperability. This is the ability to leave the service afterwards. Google has gotten very good because of government requirements about offering portability, the ability to take all of the data that was in their cloud and say, hey, I'm done, I'm walking away, and export your mail, your contacts, all of that information. If you are a quote-unquote cloud service and you don't offer portability and interoperability, the ability to leave that service, you don't meet the NIST definition of a cloud provider. And because I've been saying that NIST is the definitive, this is what a cloud is, if you are talking to a cloud provider and they don't have the ability to port off or leave, they don't meet the definition of a cloud provider. As a platform as a service, each of these roles again appear. Your business and support is your billing and your infrastructure and the ability to say, how much do I want to spend on this platform as a service. And so if you're talking about Google App Engine, you're setting a daily budget, you're tweaking the numbers to say these are how many instances I'm willing to have, this is the quality of service, and that becomes part of the provisioning as well because each of those business functions changes how much you're going to spend, but as you change your performance numbers, you're changing the provisioning and configuration which changes how much you're going to pay, but you have a dashboard that says. And then portability and interoperability, Google App Engine has the ability to run in a couple of different environments. You're not tied to the Google App Engine. Portability is a little rough. Exporting all of your data, if you've got terabytes of information, can take a really long time. But you can run Google App Engine on other platforms through the software development kit and through a couple of other ways. So you have portability, you can leave the service. Infrastructure as a service. Thinking about something like Amazon. You've got your business support, you've got your nice little sliders that say, hey, this is how much I'm gonna pay, this is how I'd like to pay, all that kind of stuff. You know, if you're gonna do business, you have to have business support that just kind of works that way. Provisioning and configuration. See, um, Amazon has a crap load of configuration, like <laughs> more than any other of the IAAS solutions that I've seen out there. You know, what OS do I want to run? How many instances do I want to run? What size instance do I want? Which server space do I want to run in? Which 
location do I want to run in? Do I want to have failover? Do I want to have all this other stuff? So they've got a crap ton of provisioning and configuration. Portability and interoperability. Uh, generally, if you're running on Amazon, you have the ability to say, hey, I was running Linux with PHP, so I was running a LAMP stack, so I'm going to take that LAMP stack and I'm going to dump it into you know, Liquid Web or Rackspace or any of those other places. So again, you've got portability and interoperability. It meets all of the qualifications. As such, those are the, you know, the three requirements required for each of the as a service. And I would say that some of the as a service options that are out there that are not considered a software, a platform, or an infrastructure, you know, people are talking about Ethernet as a service or database as a service or any of those things, will have to have these three layers in the cloud service management so that you can say, yes, I've got billing, yes, I've got configuration, and yes, I have portability and interoperability. You can't be an island if you're a cloud, if you are the only place that can run your particular software, run your particular operating system, run your particular whatever, you don't meet the NIST definition of a cloud, if you don't have the provisioning and configuration options, you don't meet the definition of a cloud. If you don't have the business support, you don't meet the definition of a cloud. 